The conflict in Gaza has also cast a shadow over a controversial visit to Germany by Turkey's president. Recep Tayyip Erdogan has been here in Berlin for talks with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. The two leaders voiced sharply different views on the war. A handshake with a stern-looking German president, Frank-Walter Steinmeier. And then on to the chancellery, where Olaf Scholz was waiting to greet Erdogan with a friendly smile. The usual images from a visit between NATO allies. But as the two leaders spoke to the media just before their talks, it was clear there was a wide gulf between them on the war between Israel and Hamas. I'm aware that we have different, indeed very different views on this conflict. That's hardly a secret, and that is even more of a reason for us to talk. Particularly in difficult times, we need to speak directly face to face. Look, places of worship are hit, churches are hit, hospitals are hit, but shooting hospitals, killing children, these things are not in the Torah. You can't do that. It is not in the Declaration of Human Rights. You cannot do it. In recent weeks, Erdogan has made a series of inflammatory statements about the conflict, calling Hamas freedom fighters and Israel a terror state. But his tone in Berlin was more conciliatory. How can we solve this problem? How can we get a humanitarian pause in the fighting? How can Turkey and Germany make a contribution? And how can we take these steps together? Olaf Scholz concentrated on the positives, such as Ankara's constructive role brokering a grain deal between Russia and Ukraine, and the importance of trade between Turkey and Germany. But on the war in Gaza, his position was clear. If you know Germany, you will know our solidarity with Israel is unwavering. Israel has the right to defend itself aligned with international law. At the same time, we say every life is equally valuable, and this means the suffering of the people of Gaza is upsetting us as well. The two leaders said there were plenty of other issues to discuss during Erdogan's very short visit. Migration, NATO enlargement and Turkey's hope of buying Eurofighter warplanes were all on the agenda. And if the clash of words over Gaza was kept to a minimum, that in itself may be counted as a success. For more, I'm joined now by uh, Erkan Arikan, director of DW's uh, Turkish service. So, Erkan, was in fact the Turkish president's uh, visit a success, and if so, for whom? I don't think so, Michael, that this visit was a success for any of them, uh, mm. neither for Erdogan nor for uh, Chancellor Scholz, because I think that most of the topics are talked in a kind of diplomatic way and not very open and uh, face to face. I think they had to. Um, talk more deep because in the past that uh, Erdogan calls Israel a terrorist state and calls the Hamas a resistant fighter organization, uh, we can say that they are like uh, uh, Boy Scouts, something like that, and that's really ridiculous. And I think this kind of topics had to uh, put it out yesterday and uh, they were didn't. No. Even before Erdogan arrived, his visit was roundly criticized here in Germany. Why? It's because of these kind of expressions that he did in the past. It wasn't just once. I mean, he did it twice. He did it two weeks ago in front of the AKP members of parliament. And on Tuesday, again, he did it again uh, in front of the AKP uh, members. And uh, everybody shouted for him and everybody screamed for him because the relationship to Hamas is very deep and therefore um, Erdogan was very criticized in the past as a NATO ally. He had to be side by side with all these NATO members, but he didn't and he always make a step side and that's not very healthy for uh, all of them. Mm. Um, Erkan, Schultz very publicly addressed the major differences between these two leaders. How do you think he mastered the delicate balance between, on the one hand, resolutely standing by German policy, and on the other, showing warmth, welcoming uh, an antagonist of that policy. Sure. I think that Schultz uh, 
didn't have any other, other chance to react like this he did yesterday. But uh, I think most of the people, most of the experts, most of, most of the journalists will say that Schultz wasn't very, very um, aggressive. He had to be more um, reliant on his standings uh, to Israel, for example, and uh, against the Hamas. And he didn't do this very open. Um, and frankly, I think he was, he looked a little bit weak. Uh, he wasn't, of course, he never smiled, of course, mm. but uh, I think he should be more directly and more strong against his opponent from Turkey, but he wasn't, unfortunately. Talk about the specific differences, the, dif the specific uh, topics mm -hmm. that you keep bringing up, what should he address much more specifically? I think he should much more address that Hamas is a terrorist organization. He did it, but not. he just talked to the press and not to Erdogan. He addressed that to the press. And I think that the freedom of press and freedom of speech in Turkey should also be a topic that he had to bring up yesterday. But of course, the migration issue, the... Um, the, the deal, the refugee deal uh, with the European Union is also a very important topic. And of course, these kind of topics were um, on the major hand. So there was um, too less time to talk everything. And of course, no official press conference, just two questions. And there was not very much. Should Schultz have addressed anything in addition to that? Sweden, NATO? Definitely. I mean, we see that Turkey desperately wants 14 euro fighters from Germany. And I think on the other hand, uh, Germany will say, OK, so let's uh, put Sweden into the NATO and then we can discuss again. And this is also a very important thing. And I don't think that we are on the end of the discussion. It will go on for the next uh, couple of weeks or maybe a month till mm. we get a solution to in this issue. Erkan Arikan, head of uh head of director of DW Turkish. Thank you so much. Welcome.